Before I start, I just want to say I stand here by myself, but my team is Jordanian, Israeli, and Palestinian, and peace is an inclusive process. And I want to thank all the Middle Eastern delegates who are here and that prove that our region is one of hope and not one of hate. And you are heroes for coming here today, and thank you for the opportunity to meet you. So, I'll start now. So, my name is Rotem Karo Weizmann, and I'm an Israeli. My grandfather is a Holocaust survivor who survived the inferno of Auschwitz. My great-grandma was born in the Muslim quarter in the old city of Jerusalem to a family of Orthodox Jewish rabbis. Her childhood friends were actually her Muslim neighbors. And these neighbors saved her life during the riots in Jerusalem during the 1920s. This taught me early on that even in the midst of conflict, there's also good will. I believe that this goodwill can be based on our shared environment. When I studied international relations, the environment was always viewed and talked about as soft politics, but it is anything but soft. I live in a troubled area where land is considered holy and a reason to die for. Now, I don't argue with this belief. I use this belief. After decades of conflict, it is not easy to convince the people of our region to believe in peace. However, it doesn't take much to remind them the importance of their holy land and water and its impact on their well-being and their bare existence. Water is a scarce resource in our region. Our water is shared between us and our neighboring countries. It's one of the core issues of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and it's <coughs> bound to cause further escalation. Yet, it is held hostage to stagnated peace agreements between governments. But let me challenge you for a second. What if water can be the source of cooperation? What if water can be part of the solution? What if water can turn things around? What if instead of fighting over our holy land and water with our Jordanian and Palestinian neighbors, we'll fight for our waters with our neighbors. When the people of Gaza now suffer from shortages of electricity and fresh water because of inner disagreements, their raw sewage flows into Israel and threatens the well-being of Israeli communities. We might have borders between us, but water has no borders. Water couldn't care less about our borders. Water cannot wait for peace, but it can be used to achieve it. We cannot wait for our governments. We must be the wave of change. Real peace, lasting peace, is done between people. And if the people of my region think that by believing in peace, I'm a dreamer, then let me tell you something. I'm not a dreamer. I'm a doer. I work at EcoPeace Middle East Good Water Neighbors Project on community-led environmental peace building. We build trust daily by bringing together local decision makers, youth, and activists across the border. We organize 
youth gatherings, farmers' trainings, women empowerment seminars, and much more. Together, we create cooperation to solve shared environmental problems across Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. Hundreds of people across the political and socioeconomical spectrum have now asked their leadership to seek for cooperation. Municipalities signed, signed agreements. Towns were connected to sewage treatment facilities. Neighboring communi communities, including around the Gaza Strip, are now advocating for each other's water rights. Today, the youth I work with understands the importance of environmental cooperation. For them, across the border, for them, across the border, there's no enemy, there's a neighbor, there's a friend. So one young world, we can change things and peace, peace is possible. Thank you very much.